Hi, this is Jim T. Chong, the walk star. We hope you are staying safe out there. And this is the power of Jim, and I am with Jim Meyer from Remax Gold. And we are thrilled to death because we have two very brilliant guests today from Old Republic Title. We have Kathy Fetters and Lucine Leach. We work with them many, many times. Hello. And we thought we would ask these ladies some interesting questions about title and escrow today. Are you ladies ready? Ready. Okay. okay. Well, this is going to be exciting. Well, first off, okay. Kathy, um, I see you are a senior account executive, right? Right. And so tell us exactly what a senior account executive does with the title company. Well, account executive is uh, primarily responsible for um, building relationships. Uh, mostly the clientele are real estate agents and lenders. And so in developing opportunities to talk to them, I find out what their needs are. And um, we have many tools at Old Republic Title that we're um, able to give them to help them do their job better or maybe be more informed. Um, so we provide those that information in hopes that I can have the opportunity to introduce them to our staff and our escrow officers, which I have um, escrow officers in every branch in Solano County and all around. Uh, but Lucine Leach is one of our uh, top escrow officers in our office. So I work out of the Fairfield branch. And so um, my role is to develop business and relationships. Great. And as the escrow offer officer, Lucine, you know, one thing um, I know that uh, real estate has many components here. Now, what does an escrow officer do? Um, so I am the middle person between the agents, the lenders, and the buyers and the sellers. So um, I basically handle all the documents, um, the money transfer, um, the basically going over like the title reports and running the property and making sure that we are selling the property we should be selling, um, looking for any liens, any judgments. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm basically the middle person. I'm the middle person who handles be, be, between all the parties. Great. Well, you know, I know that uh, uh, it can be very complicated, a transaction or it can be a little bit simplified depending on the people that you have involved. I know Jim, Jim Meyer is very well respected as a realtor. You owe me 10 bucks, Jim, for saying that. <laughs> but, uh, but in all sincerity, uh, you know, Jim, I, I know you're excellent, very well respected what you do. And just a shout out for the transaction you did for Bunny Stewart there. Uh, just a, a really great uh, person there in Sacramento. But uh, I know that uh, through this process, you want to work with good people, especially people that are making sure that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. So, Jim, I know you have some questions here that are well, going to Yeah, I, I would like to say that uh, it's very important to say if, if you're listening right now and, you, uh, and you're going to put your house on the market for sale or if you're going to do a, uh, a refi, uh, to, you want to open escrow quick and you want to get your escrow office. Somebody awesome like Lucene who's on top of it because Lucina and I, we just closed the transaction in Vacaville where, I mean, obviously we're not going to mention the names of the, of the clients. They're wonderful people, but Lucina, remember, uh, we, we had a tax lien that we had to deal we with. Did. That, was, so, that was the transaction. Yeah. Tell me, uh, tell us a little bit about how something like that works out and how somebody who's not on top of this could screw everything up and how you can delay the close of escrow if you don't get an escrow officer like Lucina. Right. So yeah, Jen, that's interesting. We were just talking about that with our transaction and it almost, you know, held up the deal. Um, so an IRS uh, tax lien popped up on the property um, and there was some confusion with the other agent disclosing, you know, maybe that it was being paid off in another transaction, um, but mm -hmm. it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So you know, so we were almost at the 10th hour buyer's loan, buyer's interest rate is, you know, lock is about to expire. We got to get this going. And unfortunately, with the whole COVID-19 situation, you can't get a hold of anybody at the IRS right now. And ordering demands are taking quite a long time. So that's something, you know, when that popped up, we should have ordered that right away. But just the miscommunication 
um, you know, happening with us not ordering it because they were thinking it was going to be taken care of in another transaction. We, uh, in certain situations, not always, but in this one, it, it worked out to where we were able to get approval from upper management for us to withhold um, a certain amount for the tax lien so that we could record so that, you know, the buyer wouldn't lose their interest rate and we could close the transaction on time. So everybody was on board and we were able to do that. So it, it kind of really worked out. Which and so nice. it, it's key. It's communication. Communication is definitely key um, from beginning to end in a transaction. So that is so important to disclose all information because you don't want things to pop up at the 10th hour because it, sometimes it can cause the deal. So if there's issues, I mean, they're going to come up. You can't hide. You can't get away from them. So let's just deal with them. Let's get let's just see how we can get past it. And so here's a kind of a simple question. Why do I need title insurance? Uh, because we're protect, we're we are insuring on a purchase. Your buyer wants title insurance because they want to make sure when they close, they're only incurring their own liens against the property. Um, if there's something that we miss, a tax lien. I mean, those don't go away without being paid. Once they're filed against the property, they have to be paid and released. So if we transfer property and we don't pay those off, or if they're missed, that's what the title insurance for the buyer is going to protect them against. And so, and so many times buyers who, who've never bought before, they're a first time buyer, they'll say, oh, well, what do they owe on the house? Is, is it gonna be paid off, uh, and, et cetera? And we'll always say, don't worry. But in essence, especially now, I think you do have to I worry. I mean, you have to. Things are, sometimes things are missed, things are misfiled. Um, right. And once those, mis once those misfilings get corrected, they're going to attach to the appropriate property. So there's no way to reverse that. So you definitely want title insurance. It's a reinsurance on the property that you're purchasing. Right, right. It, it, it don't worry because you your job is to take care of that and then you're not of course it's just like you, it's just like if you buy a brand new car you're not going to buy a brand new car without title insurance so you wouldn't want to buy a house without the same thing you just want that peace of mind exactly um so um so you've been with old republic your entire career which is amazing it says a lot um and uh kathy how long have you been with old republic uh seven years now seven years and um we've done a bunch of deals together and uh, we're gonna do a bunch more. And the kind of nice thing is that uh, with uh, Lucina and Kathy is they're very easy to, to track down. Uh, you don't hide from the agents at all. <laughs> You're there and, uh, and there's always somebody at Old Republic to help. And if for some reason Lucini is on the phone with somebody else, there's usually somebody else who will jump in and just definitely. get it done and take care of it. So it definitely is a, a really nice tight knit mm -hmm. family in mm -hmm. Fairfield. Um, and so, um, um, Kathy, what would you say to the realtors out there who are maybe they just got their license, they're just starting off? Do you have some kind of advice on on how they could contact you and, and some some kind of education that you could give them, basically on their marketing to go and get clients? Yeah. Yeah, so because I've been in the business for so long, it's been, it, it really is an advantage um, because I've seen a lot of things work and I've seen a lot of things not work. I've seen a lot of new agents come into the business and a lot of people leave. And, you know, there are certain things that are um, typical of a successful real estate agent. And many of the things that we offer will help agents, um, you know, with the resources to be informed and actually take action on um, how to develop their business. Um, though my role is to really inform about the title and escrow process, um, with that comes so much more knowledge. And so what I encourage is, is I ask all the real estate agents out there, or even people that are thinking of getting into real estate, a lot of times they don't really understand what that takes to get into the business, or maybe they think I can just get my license and get started. So I'll offer that info information to people that are considering the business, or just kind of wonder what does a realtor do all day, or what do you do all day? Um, I'm open to having those kind of conversations with people in the community, um, but mainly drawing you to our professional staff that's responsive, courteous, treat you like it's family. I mean, I get that feedback from the agents that we work with all the time is that when they walk in our doors, they feel that this is home and that their clients will be taken care of. And that's huge. And um, we are really big on making sure we're in, interact with one another. Uh, Lucy and I are very in tune with what's going on with our clients. Um, 
and what's going on with the transaction. So it helps us both to be able to find solutions um, and me to, you know, help Lucene and her team um, also do those things. So I would tell any real estate agent or anybody, even lenders, um, if you're looking to find out a little bit more about recorded information or data, um, you know, just different informational um, items that will help them do their job better, they should definitely give us a call because we're very much on the ball. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, you know, dealing with the lockdown and, and, and what is happening here, has it made it more complicated and in what ways, if it has, you know, just during this, uh, what we're calling a pandemic? Well, if I could just first say that our company has been amazing. I mean, within, I would say, even within the week, like three to four days, they had people distributed where we were not, we were separated, but together. Um, we had a lot of our workstations set up in our home offices immediately. We had VPN numbers. We were very much taken care of in that way and protected because our company did um, make sure that the information coming into or people coming in and out of the office was uh, managed in a way that allowed us, I think, to feel protected. Um, Lucine might have more specifically about the transactions and like notaries and things like that. So I'll let her take the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will have to say why I agree with Kathy. From the beginning, since the COVID-19 lockdown happened, um, Old Republic was on it from the beginning. Like it was never any bumps in the road with us. Like it didn't affect any of our transactions or how we were closing transactions at all. Um, like she said, everyone is set up to work from home if we have to, if that's the case that it happens to be. Mm -hmm. um, some are working in the office, some are working from home. And actually the transaction, the transition has been great. It has, you know, I don't notice any of the clients complaining that there's been any difference um, with how their transactions are being closed it's it's still they're still getting exactly the same service we just do what we have to do on our end um, to make sure that everybody's protected and safe but and still providing that excellent customer service to our clients so uh, when I is, call Old Republic right now and and somebody answers I say can I talk to Lucene are they going to get me to your home uh, office or are you at um i've been i've been one of the ones who has been coming to the office and that's by choice but i am set up to work from home um so yeah when you, you i mean we still need someone there because people are still dropping off you know earnest money deposits um you know loan documents are still being dropped off so you know we do still have some in the office working every day on a regular basis just to do that in and out we're close to the in and out traffic, but someone needs to be there to get some of the you know items that are still being mm -hmm. dropped off and taken care yeah, of yeah you know hey you mentioned in and out you put it right by the burger place. That's pretty good, <laughs> we right? are around the corner in from and the burger right? in and out. <laughs> oh my gosh, you hit me right where it stands, right? Hey, 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 do escrow with us and we'll give you a free burger. I love it. I love it. All right. Um, that's not a real official offer for those of you who are listening. Right. Not a bad right. idea though. <laughs> it was very seamless and the only real difference that I'm seeing is that uh the the signings uh are you doing any signings at the office or it's all notary we are not yeah no we are not doing any signings in the office right now all of our signings are being handled by outside certified uh notaries and what do they have to wear a mask or do they have rules or how, how are they is i'm guessing <laughs> So each it's all of the visual, real estate is essential, right? Yeah, so we, we accommodate our clients how they want to. Some people don't feel comfortable with, you know, a notary coming to their home. So they've been setting up tables outside on the patio in the grass. Um, I haven't, again, I haven't had anyone complain about the transition of, you know, a notary coming to their home and signing them. Yes, we definitely say stay protected. Um, they have to sign a disclosure saying, you know, that they're going to wear gloves and, you know, the mask and that they haven't, you know, had any sick symptoms. So everything has, like I'm saying, the transition of everything and how we've moved forward with this and, you know, complying with all the rules and regulations has been smooth. I haven't had any complaints about anything. Right. I'd say it's seamless. I mean, cause we've yeah. done several, just as the, uh, as the, the virus thing, whatever you call it, the, the COVID deal COVID started. COVID, yeah. And when like you were calling the IRS, you're competing with all these people trying to get their, their, tra their Trump check. And, uh, uh, and, and, and we still are doing it. So I, I'm not very down. impressed. Yes. We got it done. Amen. There you go. <laughs> um, so if somebody wants to become an escrow officer, uh, is there any kind of special schooling for that? Do you have to have a degree? You know, Jim, I was extremely blessed. Um, I started doing this right out of high school. So when I started, the company just trained me from within. I've kind of pretty much done everything in the company. I worked my way from the bottom to the top. I've done, 
I went from a courier to the order desk to doing customer service to being an examiner, um, an escrow assistant to an officer. So they, I just kind of learned all the bases and kept wanting to advance myself further in the company and just pushing to be more and more. And that's how, you know, so no, I basically, like I said, the, I didn't choose a career. I didn't know anything about a title company when I started the business, but I mean, look at me now, 21 years. I mean, I can't imagine doing anything else right now. Well, uh, you know, um, one thing I want to ask, and, and again, um, this is an interesting question. You know, I usually talk to the realtors about trends, mortgage people about trends and stuff as well. What about uh, your perspective in terms of the trends that you see? Do you see any commonalities in terms of what people are missing, forgetting, or things that you have to remind people more about, you know, just during this period of time? During the COVID-19? Yes, correct. Uh-huh. It's just business as usual for what you... It's just business, business as yeah. usual, to really be honest. Yeah. Right. And the only thing is, like, maybe just the misconception that they think that they can come in and do a signing. We just have to remind them that we're not, you know, doing signings in the office. That's the only thing for me. I don't think that there's been anything I have to remind them that this has, like, affected our transactions um, on the escrow side any differently. I can't say, like, for Jim on the realtor side, if this affects him any differently. But for us, that that has to probably be about the only thing. Like, we're still taking deposits. People are still dropping off money and docs and documents that we need. So... So from your, I'm sorry, that, Kathy. I'm sorry. Um, there is one thing that, not that we've been affected, but we get this information um, from corporate quite a bit. And it's just in general, um, pretty much any industry, but just watching out for wire fraud or people, um, you know, just um, hacking into, you know, calls or, or um, we're very protected. We have many firewalls. We have a big corporation. So we do have all those things in order, but a lot of times your average um, consumer may not have a lot of those uh, firewalls intact. So, you know, just always be sure that if you're sending money anywhere that you're making sure that your converse, the conversation is being had with your escrow professional. Um, but for the most part, we have not had an issue with that, but necessarily we want to make sure that people are aware. That's a really good point yeah. because I've heard of people uh, creating a fake email account for an escrow officer sending out emails asking for bank info so yeah. that the, uh, money can be transferred. Right. If you're doing a transaction with the title company, uh, don't ever send information about your bank account over an email. Uh, I guess you're going to be doing it over the phone. Am I correct? Right. Just talk to your escrow yeah, yeah. person. And, uh, uh, which is important. That, and the, the nice thing is that with Old Republic, you've always got somebody that's going to answer that phone and take care correct. of it. You know, the industry itself is taking a different form. You know, Jim, um, you know, just, just a quick update. Uh, you know, I don't know um, if everyone knows what an essential business is. And I know real estate itself has been termed as non-essential then essential, right? Um, can you give us a little bit of background on what's been going on and what you see happening moving forward in terms of real estate itself? Well, I think uh, eventually we're going to be able to go back to normal, but uh, um, number one, as, as a realtor, uh, I never like to hug people anyway, so uh, no more hugs. Uh, that's probably, I'm going to just stop that completely. Uh, I have a no hug policy. Yeah. Um, yeah, so in other words, all those things you're saying about hugs, how it's good for you, you know, the hearts connect when you hug, okay, so yeah. we're going to just abolish that, that since the COVID-19. All right, we got it. Okay, got it. That's kind of hard for a hugger. That's, that's right. That's right. Hey, right, hey, right. hey, you're in there. Right. You're three against one, though. No, but that's all right. That's okay. But, but there is therapy for that. Um, okay, so, so bottom That line, is the therapy, yes, by the way. I, and, and I've said this before, as far as what I'm seeing is that uh, this is a great time if you're a buyer and you were afraid to go out and buy a house before because you hated the fact that your realtor would tell you, oh, there's two other people that are uh, putting in offers. We're going to have to come in high. We're going to have to negotiate something. It's getting to be a little bit easier to negotiate a deal and to get that seller to clear a termite report, to do roof work, to, do, uh, to give a credit for closing costs. So I, I think we have a very small window now where people, if you're on the fence about buying, uh, it's a great time to buy, and it's a great time, uh, especially if you're going to move up, sell your $400,000 house to buy a $600,000 house, because 
uh, $400,000 houses are still going pretty fast. The six hundred, seven, eight hundred thousand, I think, are a little bit slower. Go and get a killer deal on that six hundred thousand dollar house because that person that's selling it, uh, especially if they have a really good reason why they have to sell, uh, and especially since so many people have taken their house off the market right now, uh, they could be very motivated. You might get a deal that you will never get uh, in the future. So uh, buy, buy, and buy. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Um, and, you know, in terms of the marketplace, you know, with, with the recession, things happening, do you think that is, well, of course, things are affected, you know, moving forward, right? Uh, do, you, do you see a best time to buy or is it business as usual in general? Do you see housing prices maybe uh, plummeting a little bit later, Jim? What are your I, thoughts? I'm not going to, well, first, one thing you're never going to see a realtor predicting that prices are going to plummet. Uh, but we never know what's going to happen. Here's the thing is that if you're, if you're going to live in that house and, and you're paying rent right now, do you really think that your rent is going to go down? And if you're going to go buy a house as a first time buyer, wouldn't you rather lock in a price for the next 30 years where your rent is never going to go up because you're the owner of that home. So uh, mm -hmm. even if, God forbid prices do plummet, it would be nice to get into your own home and to, to make that payment to the lender so that eventually you pay it off and you own that house free and clear so that at no time are you going to think that a landlord's going to knock on your door saying, hey, I want a little bit more money than we were asking for before. Uh, but we, you know, Kathy and Lucene can tell us, are, are you seeing uh, things slowing down on your end? Actually, we haven't really. <laughs> We've been doing very well. Um, at first, you know, we were expecting, a, well, we weren't sure what to expect, but we were anticipating a possible real dip. Um, you know, I would say maybe a tiny lull for one week of, um, of April because when the realtors weren't able to show the properties at the first point, um, they didn't have their protective um, personal gear. And before they became um, essential, not essential, uh, they were sort, sort of halted for a minute to kind of do virtual um, houses and things like that. So I would say maybe a week, it was a little off, but we ended the month strong pretty much with the, the, the previous month that we had. So um, I, I didn't see much of an effect. Um, it's been pretty consistent for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I think I'm doing really good and I thought I, I might be an anomaly, but uh, probably not. So, uh, so I think the media creates a myth and they love to, to predict gloom and doom, but uh, maybe if you, if you've got a multi-million dollar house, who knows? Maybe it's going to stay on the market 90 days or whatever instead of 30 days. But anything with uh, uh, in Solano County that's priced right, it's still selling. So and we're right in between, you know, in between San Francisco and Sacramento. We're on a thoroughfare. I just feel like we're the one of the like least one of the most affordable counties still in the whole Bay Area. Right. Yeah. So some great things going on here. Absolutely. Well, you know, this is this is really good and educational. Now, um, one thing I want to go back to before we end here, Jim, you were talking about how it's so important to get that escrow account started, right? Um, and just to start getting things going, right? Um, is that a common mistake where people aren't really um, positioning themselves right from the very beginning? Um, just uh, Lucian or, or Kathy? think so i mean um when it's actually in contract i mean that's the first step you have to take is to yeah. go into escrow because mm -hmm. we are going on a purchase we're going to take the deposit that's what's going to secure the deal itself is the buyer's deposit in escrow Correct. um on, refi on refinances um definitely i i think the ball is going i think when it's a listing maybe some agents don't open up uh the listing and start the title work and so that might be a delay um, mm -hmm. Because when you're dealing with the listing, like, and you're putting your, when you go into contract, you want to know what you already are facing are an, an up against on your property. Your seller wants to get an expected amount of what they're going to be getting back on different scenarios of different sales prices if they do credits versus non-credits. So 
um, that would probably be where you might see a delay is on a listing transaction where an agent may not open up and start the actual escrow title work process. Um, and again, you don't want any surprises at the 10th hour. When you go on a contract, you want to be ready to rock and roll. You want to have all your ducks in, yes. you know, order and be, you know, know, know what you're facing and what you're up against. Or if you're working with a realtor who, who just doesn't, who, who delays getting the payoff info oh, yeah. from the seller. And I mean, that's well, been a problem. Yeah, that, that's, I mean, been a, that's been a huge problem with the whole, you know, with that is one thing with the cold COVID-19 because a lot of those lenders um, are working from home. So when we are ordering payoffs, we have to have that additional time we have to take into consideration and to be patient that we're not going to get it in five minutes like we were getting before because everybody's working from home. So, right. Like, like this, uh, again, the one in back a little, we just did in the one in Sassoon. I take the listing, I say that they will give me the, the account number and the last four digits of your social. I'm going to get those to the scene immediately. And I remember I, one of those two, uh, the account number looked really short. And I remember <laughs> I, I said, Lucy said, don't worry about it. I'll call her. I'll figure this out. And then I didn't even have to think about it because you were on it. So, and that's what's cool about having a family like Old Republic is that they know what they're doing. You put the ball in their court. Uh, if we don't give you guys the right information, uh, then we're in trouble. But right. also, I'm guessing you would be calling me and saying, hey, Jim, where's the where's that uh, bank account number? I need to do this. Mm -hmm. While you use an out-of-town company, maybe some people will, uh, especially with these bank-owned properties, which we don't see that so much anymore, but they used to force you to use out-of-town title companies and it was very hard to communicate. And mm -hmm. this is local people that, you know, you can go and knock on Lucine's door and uh, if you had to, but you're not going to have to because you can always find Kathy at Lucine anytime. So, but the point is, it's, you're, you're not dealing with robots, you're dealing with real people. Yeah, and this is really important. And, you know, we're trying really hard, you know, during this pandemic to make sure we give you really great cutting edge information from the professionals uh, like Kathy Lucia. And, you know, you're going to want to be able to, as a buyer, really be educated in the new economy. You want to work with the professionals, but also do your own fact checking where you need to fact check. But also that's why you really want to make sure you're working with the right people. And uh, Kathy, I just want to see, do you have any final comments that you'd like to uh, let I do. I actually do. Uh, thank you. Um, one of the things that they can do if people are trying to find out information um, is our website is amazing. It's oldrepublictitle.com, and you can put in slash whatever county you're in even. But there are zillions of resources there. There's information. What is an escrow? There's videos that are really easy to access. Um, it's just a slew of information. If you want to know a blank form or a form about how should I take my vesting when I take the ownership of my property, should I take it as a single or a sole and separate property, you know, things like that. There's answers all over our website for most of the questions that you might have, but it should never overtake, um, you know, the fact that they can contact us if they have any questions. And isn't it true, uh, Kathy, that you can go onto the website and say, if you're going to be selling your house, you know that the payoff is... Eighty thousand dollars or whatever, it'll itemize stuff for you too. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. We can play with it, mm -hmm. and you right. can come up with a little seller net sheet, that calculator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and uh, and then you can have it there. Uh, so you're talking to your spouse about selling the house. You say, "Oh, Zillow told me we'll sell it for this much," and of course, Zillow is always wrong. But you plug all those numbers <laughs> yeah. in. And it's, it's in the middle of the night, you can't get a hold of anybody, but then eight o'clock in the morning, they call Lucene and they say, and, and she helps you with it. You call your realtor at you 815 realtor. and you list the property. Right. Yeah. Well, this is really good. That's very good information about the website. Thank you, oldrepublictitle.com. You're going right. to want to check that out. Lucene, do um, you have any uh, final comments you'd like to make? Um, I just want to say thank you for uh, allowing us to join you guys today. This has really been nice and a pleasure to do this. And um, it's all about relationship. And, you know, for us on the escrow side, there's so much hustle and bustle and stress and things going on in the transaction on the realtors, the agents, um, the lending and the buyers and the sellers. 
we just try to give peace in mind. That's what we try to do. So we try to take some of the pressure off of everyone. Um, you're in good hands when you're with Old Republic. Like we step up, we do what we have to do. We want to make everybody's job as easy as possible. Like Jim was saying, like when he hands a transaction over to me, he knows he's in good hands. He knows I have his back 100%. Um, and I know he has mine. And we're going to just do what we have to do. I'm going to answer any questions at any time to, that the buyer has. There's no such thing as a stupid question. You can ask a million questions. Everybody wants confidence and to feel good in their transactions. So that's what we, we try to offer to all of our clients. That's yeah. great. And, you know, this is really important. Um, just like any sort of sport, the team is very important. And, uh, Jim, any final comments here? Clearly, you, you've worked with uh, these people a lot, so that's very exciting. But uh, Well, I, yeah, I would just like to thank uh, Kathy and Lucine for, for joining us. And uh, uh, I'd like to uh, invite everybody who's out there thinking about if you've got, if you just took a bunch of money out of the stock market, you want to invest it in something called Jim T. Chong. Uh, if you're ready to sell your house, give me a call. And then uh, Kathy and Lucene are going to treat you like the king or queen that you are as we help you sell your house. Uh, hopefully as effortlessly as possible. Yeah. Well, we want to thank all of you for listening. And, uh, you know, the house is probably one of the most expensive assets you're going to purchase. You're going to, again, want to get the right people to be able to help you make that purchase or make that sell. And also the right people that are doing the coordination. That is very important. Some people might say that these two are the quarterbacks, right? But uh, we are so excited to be able to give you great information from the professional people that are out in the field doing it. This is Jim T. Chong, the walks start along with Jim Meyer from Remax Gold with Kathy and Lucine from where are you ladies from? Great and thank you for tuning in to The, the Power, Power of Jim. Power.